What is up my maniacs, I'm the Awesome Maniac, and today I'm covering the sequel to the movie that saved New Line Cinema from bankruptcy, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Released on November 1st, 1985, it was put into production based on the overwhelming success of the first movie. Wes Craven was offered the director share, but had a lot of problems with the script. He did have some input in it, however, like he's responsible for more focus being on Lisa. Let's talk about Lisa by starting with characters. As was the case in the first movie, there's a bigger focus on the characters than what you would normally find in a slasher movie. And that's what I like about the nightmares. I can mostly remember all the names of all the characters from all the movies. Maybe that's due to the smaller cast in these movies. Like I said in the last review, there's a smaller cast which allows for more time for each character to develop properly. Like Jesse, which I'll get into now. Jesse Walsh is a normal high schooler with normal high school problems. Like a rich girl that wants to get into your pants. Or exploding birds or a dream demon that wants to use your body to commit mass murders. Okay, maybe not that normal. Watching Jesse's mind state deteriorate due to Freddy driving him insane is compelling to watch. Like, if we didn't know who Freddy was already, there could have been a twist where Freddy wasn't real and Jesse was just actually gone crazy. That's how well done it was. And then there's Lisa, who reminds me of young Meryl Streep. She's very supportive, a real friend. Put aside her obvious romantic feelings that her and Jesse share for each other, she's just someone you'd like to have as a friend. Not to mention, you know, she has money. Now, talking about those romantic feelings, the relationship between Jesse and Lisa feels real and natural. Something I can't say for a lot of horror movies. There's a lot of forced chemistry, which I've covered in my Friday series before. But a few that come to mind other than Jesse and Lisa are Tommy and Megan from uh, Jason Lives and John Tate and Molly from H2O. And the last main character I want to focus on is Grady. I like how he and Jesse form an actual friendship after being at odds in the beginning of the movie. You know, when you kind of spend an hour doing push-ups with somebody, you tend to form a bond. The other characters include asshole gym teacher Schneider, Lisa's friend Carrie, and Jesse's family. Schneider is just one major asshole, it's plain and simple, and my god, Jesse's family do not pick up fast at all, especially his dad. They're, they're just no help. For characters, I'm going to give this a party rating. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to the story, whether it be the stuff that was actually on screen or the stuff underneath, like the blatant major homosexual undertones, which may or may not have been intentional. But for the purposes of this review, I'll stick to the stuff that's on screen, mostly. Starting with the opening, I like that Robert England was actually the bus driver in the beginning because for, it should have been a red herring, but I didn't catch it until like last year. The story of this one is very different compared to the original, whereas in the first one, Freddy was all about stalking Nancy and killing all her friends, and this one is using, all about using Jesse to gain power once more. It almost feels like a natural progression from the first one, because at the end of the first one, Nancy took away all of his power, and this one, he's trying to use someone else to get it all back again. That's what he did in Freddy vs. Jason as well. Now to talk about something that I really didn't like in this movie. 
how Freddy was able to influence real world things by messing with them physically. Like with how the birds were, or I don't know, when he just jumped out at the pool party to kill all those teens. He wasn't pulled out of a dream, he just was in the real world, which I do not like at all. One of the major aspects about Freddy Krueger is his existence in the non-reality plane, the dream world. And to me, this is a very big negative to the movie. Despite that, I love how the scene was shot. It made Freddy look fucking badass, which is why I have mixed feelings about it. The practical effects in this are really well done. I like whenever Jesse turns into Freddy, or those fucking dogs that still live in my nightmares, or even Freddy melting at the end. All done, pretty good. And lastly, I want to talk about the ending because it's leagues better than the ending of the first one. Where the first ones was tacked on to set up for a sequel, this one just feels right, calling back to the opening. There's some things that the story does really right, and some things that the story does really bad, and so I think it'd be fair to place this one smack dab in the middle with a Groundhog Day rating. Forgive me if this section is a little bit short, I explained a lot about what I thought of the character of Freddy Krueger in the last review. I will say though, I did notice some differences in his character between 1 and 2. He's more humorous in this one, uh, with how he messes with Jesse and stuff. That will grow as the series progresses. He's also more content with showing his face, or at least the filmmakers were, because right in the beginning you can see it plain as day, just straight up. And speaking of his face, I can't say I'm a big fan of the design in this one. It's just like a slimy, stretched version of how he was in the first movie. And then you got his witch nose, but all these things are superficial and have no bearing on his performance, which is still great, but not as good as it was in the first one, so I'll definitely give this a badass rating. The kills in this one aren't as memorable, but that should not detract from one of the absolute best scenes of the entire series, and that's Freddy slaughtering those teens at the pool party. The music and the fire and the sheer forgive me for using this word repeatedly, badassery of it all combines to make one awesome scene. Other than that, you got the Schneider kill and the Grady kill, neither of which are particularly great. They're not bad, just not great. So having said all that, I'm going to give the kills a neck snap rate. And here are those aforementioned kills. For years, I had this one as the second worst of the series. I guess never gave it much of a chance, really. But I'm glad to say that going back to watch this, it's a lot better than I remember. What I really liked about it was the character of Jesse. His struggles with Freddy wanting to take over his body and his relationship with Lisa are the absolute strongest aspects of this movie. So a little bit of forgettable kills aren't going to drag this one down. That being said, the biggest part of this movie that keeps from giving a higher rating is Freddy in the real world. Well, how he's done in the real world in this movie. So I think a low rainy day rating is what this one's gonna get. Hey, I bet you're tired of me talking about my merch and Patreon by now, huh? Well, you could always just uh, buy it. Description below. Join me next time where I cover a movie with one awesome theme song. Till then, don't forget to like, share, comment, and if you haven't, subscribe. Bye bye.